some of you may have seen a video that I just did or posted recently about the YouTube uh, personality that we know as Master Wong the Kung Fu teacher that uh, is always demonstrating self-defense uh, techniques on YouTube and uh, I was a bit um, how should I say concerned about his video on self-defense against a knife and I expressed my viewpoint uh, in my video the one right before this one However, um, I happen to be looking uh, at a few of his uh, posts here today, and I'm even more—I'm even more. I'm sorry, I got cons a little uh, excited there. I'm even more concerned about this gentleman. Now, uh, this particular video was done about four years ago. I'm just coming across it. I don't necessarily follow uh, Master Wong's channel. However, I have um, watched some of his videos over the past couple years. But this particular video, to add insult to injury, I just don't understand. I really don't. Um, I actually do, but I don't. And what I mean by that is this. As I said in the first video on knife defense that he posted, that doesn't translate in a street situation the things that he was doing or suggesting for self-defense as far as the knife situation was concerned when you're talking about all types of people teaching that particular set of techniques to that he was describing. Now. A knife is a personal weapon. I've already said that. It's very dangerous. It can get you killed. If a person is trying to rob you at knife point, give them what they're asking for and walk away. Okay? A gun is no different. Now, I would probably think just uh, as much the same way, if not greater, when you're talking about a gun in terms of just giving my uh, belongings, my money, or whatever to the assailant instead of trying to struggle with them and they have a gun. So I was robbed at gunpoint at a friend's convenience store several years ago around the corner from my store, one of my other stores that I used to own. And uh, as many years that I, as I have in martial arts, I complied with the man. He had a hoodie, a mask, and a huge gun. And it only took a few seconds for me to ascertain that it was real, the situation. Even though we had practiced this for years with some of my advanced students and played it out in our mind and in the classroom, this was not an occasion for me to try and become a hero. Number one, it's not my store. Number two, I didn't feel immediately threatened. And all he wanted was the money. I was the person, the individual that he asked to empty the registers. I did so, I complied. And he gestured me to go and lie on the floor. And I did. End the conversation. And I'm here talking to you. He could have uh, ended in a totally different way. So, with that said, Master Wong, in this particular video, he is demonstrating something that is very unrealistic in terms of gun defense. Now, if we're looking at a circle being 100%, let's just say 100%, it has a value of 100%. What percentage of the time would a martial artist, someone who's studied and trained in some form of self-defense, what percentage of that 100% do you think you would try and take on a gun as opposed to giving the assailant what they're asking for? 
50-50. 50% of the time you take on the gun, wielding individual, or 25, 75, 25% of the time, let me say this, unless your instinct, that thing that we martial arts call the id, that uh, sense of, how should I say, uh, urgency that says this individual might shoot me anyway, he might harm my family who's with me anyway. That speaks very loudly internally. And then you respond according to that call. But when a person pulls a gun on you to rob you and you begin to think, you've really lost the battle already. You should just simply understand. It's not a whole lot of thinking in trying to prepare uh, a defense because in that situation you're going to end up making a mistake and ending up in the hospital or dead. Master Wong did not think through this self-defense video about gun defense because when you're showing this on a platform like YouTube on the internet there are all types of people that's watching it. You have teenagers, even younger children. You have young adults and older people and much older people watching this. Where does he draw the line in terms of what individual group this self-defense technique is for? Because everyone is not going to be able to do what he's showing in this particular video and it makes absolutely no sense. Yes, there's a technique there. Yes, there's a wrist lock and a, a joint lock, if you will. But you have to teach all of these categories of people that I just mentioned, from the children to the elderly, this technique. And everyone's bodies are made differently. Many people have predispositions to physical problems, heart problems, arthritis, height differences you are painting this broad picture master Wong that this works for everyone and it's impossible for it to work for everyone in my estimation when I'm talking about gun defense this is the only or one of the only types of scenarios that you should not paint with such a broad brush and say this is for everyone to do this will work for everyone these are the things that you do inside your school with qualified individuals who have the wherewithal, who have the presence of mind, who can deal with certain types of situations, or students who have been with you for many years. This does not work for the average person wanting to learn self-defense. I would suggest and advise any average person wanting to learn self-defense when it comes to the gun side of self-defense give them what they want if you believe in your gut that they're going to harm you and or your family anyway and only you can ascertain it if you are in that particular situation because each one is different from person to person if you feel like it's going to happen anyway then and only then should you make any attempt to deal with that person on a physical level who has a gun but make sure that you have some prior training with that gun scenario in very various gun scenarios I should say but outside of that just give them what they want now to uh, Master Wong's credit again I'm going to say this he has a large follower or subscribership if you will on YouTube but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. He's entertaining, number one. He's a personality that uh, for some reason or another people have grown to enjoy watching his videos. Some of it is sort of comical. But I will say this other thing too, and I wanna add this, and one of my subscribers, 
made mention of this. I, I didn't in the last video. But I don't like the fact that he uses so much profanity when he's expressing himself in his self-defense situations or scenarios. It's not necessary. Especially when you're talking to a broad audience. Especially when you're talking to children and young adults. All of the profanity can go by the wayside. You don't have to use profanity like that. I'm not trying to dictate his character and say, well, you're a bad person if you curse a lot. You know, but when you're on a public venue like YouTube and you have all types of people watching your channel, it would be different if you had just one particular group of people. But everyone's watching this stuff. And I don't want my children to be watching someone demonstrating self-defense and every other word is F this and uh, the S word and so on and so forth. And I ha have young impressionable children or grandchildren watching it trying to get some information. They're going to probably pick up on that and start using those same uh, terms as well. And I'm against that. That's me. So now, as I said, this video was done about four years ago. I question, I'm not putting him down, but I question his training as it relates to knives now and now guns even more. Sometimes when you are on a forum, a platform like YouTube, and you begin to get a lot of followers or subscribers, you become sort of uh, emboldened and you feel a little bit entitled sometimes and sometimes you may not have the answer to every question as it relates to your particular uh, product that you are selling. In this instance, it's himself. He's selling a service, so to speak, self-defense, martial arts. Sometimes you may not know all of the answers about certain things. It's okay not to know. It's okay not to know some things. So when you don't know knife defense and gun defense and defense against a stick or defense against a multiple uh, assailants or attackers, then you should go and find out from someone who does. Train with someone who does. But sometimes we get bigger than the other big fish in the pond and we think we can't be told anything or taught anything anymore because we have all of these followers that should never be the case we should always be a student until the day we die I'm still a student regardless of my training regardless of my experience regardless of my title how long I've been doing martial arts I'm still a student it's really just that simple I can learn from anyone I've learned from my students I pointed it out before I learned from other students from other instructors that I know, other novices, uh, advanced people, intermediate, it doesn't matter. We should always be a sponge absorbing. Okay? So, in my conclusion again, this particular video of Master Wong's on gun defense, it is totally impractical. Unless you are someone who has many years of training, and even if you have many years of training, you should consider using any type of disarmed uh, techniques against someone who has a gun unless your life is definitely on the line. That's my view. So I'm going to leave that video link below for you to decide for yourself. If you think you can do this in a street situation or if you think it's going to play out the way he showed it in the street situation. Now, you let me know what your opinion is or your viewpoint, but I've already told you what mine is. It's not going to work for everyone across the board unless you have some form of magic. That's it. And that's all. This is Brother Teacher. Have a great evening or day.